Sahana Babatu, Sahana Bunatu, Sahaviriam Karababahai, Tejasvina Badhi Tamasuma, Shabahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Asho Chyanan Vasho Chastvam Asho Chyanan Vasho Chastvam Pragnyavadam Shchabhashase Pragnyavadam Shchabhashase Gatasu Nagatasum Shchabhashase Gatasu 
नानुशोचन्ति पंडिता स्वामी जी टुक भाषा और समराइज द भाषा ही टुक वी विल नॉट बी टेकिंग फुल्ली certain places where it is re- you know relevant i will focus on that like like right now and like that uh, was na sato vidyate bhavah there is four pages there <laughs> so like that we'll take it selectively i will summarize what is there what you what is there you'll get uh, but we will not take it line by line word by word we'll see Uh, we will go more with the extend uh, the the essence of it mm-hmm. the bhashya i mean so let us look at the verse uh should to grieve becomes shokah because of a pratyaya a suffix called ghanj and then what happens to that you know and then you put y- yat and then it becomes shochya means that which is worthy of grieving karya that which is worthy of doing you know and so like that there are certain words shochya and the shu becomes sho takes guna and so that's why it is shochya and na shochya that which is not worthy of grief is called na shochya <laughs> Yeah, see how easy Sanskrit is. <laughs> and ashochya, you make it into a noun like Rama. You know, Rama, 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 Ha, Rama, Rama, Raman, and ashochyan. Which case? Two, three, three. Yeah, second, second ah, case. Two. Plural. So ashochya object. so that which is na shochya not worthy of grieving anu ashojah tvam anvashochas tvam so that which is worthy of not grieving or not worthy of grieving what are you doing to that you are going after it with a vengeance <laughs> that is anu <laughs> and you are you have grieved over that ashoch ha you have grieved tvam over that which is not even worthy of giving any thought and yet you talk very intelligently how do you talk you talk about dharma you give a, give me a lecture on dharma and you give me a lecture on swajanas then you give me a lecture on what will happen to the whole society and then you give me a lecture on what else does he say how not to kill elders and gurus mm. and uh, you talk intelligently so i know that these this grief is not because of some mental disorder <laughs> you seem to make sense and yet you are driven senseless by your subjectivity so there is a contradiction what is the contradiction you talk intelligently but your actions and demeanor are not in keeping with what you are saying there is a gap between the walk and the talk or rather between the walk and the talk <laughs> <laughs> and the walk the walk and the walk <laughs> so walk is speech walk in english is what walk so between the walk and the walk there is a big gap and so you are a bundle of contradictions this adi shankara is going to say <laughs> adi shankara is going to say that this is completely wrong what he is doing what you are doing and uh, so what's going on you know you're you're saying wonderful things and the things are strung together they seem to grammatically make sense they seem to topic wise make sense and yet you are behaving uh, completely out of character to someone 
equipped with the knowledge of dharma you know and then he says that the true pandityam panda means knowledge panda knowledge and uh, from that we can have so many uh, nouns pandeya you know the sign of the lineage of knowledge that's a pande is a surname in india yeah yeah like desh pande yeah desh pande means it's a title given by the the that that the most intelligent family in the village desh pande it actually should be desh pande yeah then it became became pande after a while so it's pande yeah so first they spell it these britishers came and uh, you know put a little twist to everything <laughs> first they spelled it p a n d e uh y a then the a was gone pande p a n d e y you know yeah and then the y was also gone so it's pande and desh pande means desh means in that region you know they are the, the, the they they are the rooster that makes the dawn you know <laughs> so <laughs> that is that is what it means so panda means knowledge what kind of knowledge knowledge of the veda really and also of swadharma and also it could be extended to talk about the knowledge of the uh, self mm. adi shankara takes it that way Adi Shankara doesn't need much encouragement to make anything into self knowledge and to make any anything into renunciation <laughs> he is he is got full box for that but uh, anandagiri madhusudana saraswati and other people they they say panda simply means a bundle of knowledge and the one who possesses this knowledge panditah you know panda asya stiti panditah so here you talk like a knowledgeable person but let me tell you the one and only hallmark of the person of knowledge which knowledge here self knowledge yeah we are not talking of how to you know make a table not that knowledge and we are talking of that self knowledge which tables all other notions of samsara this is what we are talking about so what let me give you in one sentence he says in half a mantra in half a verse what is the sign of a person of knowledge and panditah na shochanti they do not grieve oh this is a little bit of a problem <laughs> here there is copious amounts of grief yeah it's good that they had water bottles in the chariot <laughs> and it's good that they had drunk all the water because all arjuna steers were being caught for in in the first uh, you know that's how they got the idea of rain harvesting and uh, you know rain water harvesting because they were just you know he was crying copiously in the chariot so much shoka is there so the ones who have panda pandita they do not grieve So that means they are happy all the time. No, they do not grieve over things that come and go, and that come and go is expressed in a very interesting way by Bhagavan. Gata soon, you know, asavaha, you know, asu breath prana, asavaha, you know. निर्गता असव यस्मा गतासव यु नो गतासु एंड गतासु दैट्स द पर्सन असव प्राण गतासु एंड गतासून लाइक गुरून हू इज गतासु वन हू इज नो लॉन्गर ब्रीदिंग या असु मीन्स ब्रेथ Yeah, nirgata, asavah, yes, what? From whom the breath has departed? Yes. I mean, who is that? From whom the breath has departed means what? Dead person. Dead person. Yes. 
It's politely saying. And this is Bhagavan's worldview of, you know, which is close to Yama's worldview on, on the two kinds of beings that inhabit this universe. Oh, sentient and insentient? No, no, no. Persons who are dead, Gatasu, that's why they come first. <laughs> and then who is the rest? Agatasu. Persons who are yet to stop breathing. This is the way Bhagavan looks at the world. Two kinds of people. Meaning what? Every body, every shariram, every body is going to stop breathing one day or the other. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. So every body is going to come and every body is going to go. And the body which came is going to go and the body which is yet to come is going to come. And this is with regard to everybody or every body. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a saying, uh, you know, with, with one, uh, I don't know how this, this particular saying came about. Who cries for someone who dies every day? You know, there is one <laughs> saying. <laughs> so, meaning no one cries. It's a rhetorical akshay parthe kim. So, um, who cries means, like supposing if you announce to the world that, okay, from today onwards I will not be there, then everybody will come, you have a final party. This fellow has a final party and everybody comes and everybody's so loving and all the enemies also come and there's a lot of forgiving, forgetting. Next week you have the same party again, you know, maybe half of them will come. Third time you have the same party again, nobody will come, you know, yeah. Hmm. Huh? Like the boys who cry. Yeah, yeah. It's a different version of that. Yeah. So it's in the sense that, he, you know, uh, you know, dying has to be done only once. <laughs> you can't keep on dying. And if you keep on dying and expect everyone to come to your wake each time you die, you know, nobody will come. Once if you die, it's polite. Okay, everybody <laughs> grieves. <laughs> and, you know, they spend some time grieving, they spend some time crying, and then they move on. And this is how it, life is. This is what it should be. Correct? Yeah. So, from Bhagavan's point of view, the dying is happening minute by minute. Mm-hmm. See, you are only looking at your family and your loved ones and thinking, okay, today nobody popped off, thank God. You know, that's all one, one says at the prayer hall. You go to the temple and say, today everybody is fine, thank God. Today nobody is, you know, uh, malingering. They are just lingering. It's okay, you know, this is fine. Today nobody is sick, today nobody is dying, today everybody is healthy, thank God. Today I also woke up from from my bed and I was able to recognize my surroundings, thank God, Mm -hmm. you know. So one gives thanks like that. And so that means what? That, you know, from your point of view, the, the, the thing called death is both rare and then it is something um, far away and you would like to keep it that way. Yeah, it's both, uh, you know, rare and distant, remote, remote and rare. That's the word I was looking for, remote and rare. But from Bhagavan's point of view, I mean, look at Lord Yama. All he sees is death, 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 everywhere. That's his job. And from Bhagavan's point of view, which aspect of Bhagavan, the Bhagavan that presides over Samhara the, and, and the same Bhagavan, you know, seen from the standpoint of resolving things that don't uh, need to be here. Like all the dharmic people get taken uh, out at once, you know, and uh, or sometimes the dharmic people also go along with them, you know. So like this, you know, he is looking at ev- all the continents, like even if we just take this loka, I mean the same Samhara is happening in all the other 14 lokas. You know, it's a, it's a changing population. And, uh, yeah, its population is going like this. Keeps on changing. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. It's always changing. So from Bhagavan's point of view, there is really, what, what is there to grieve? What is there to cry? So many people are dying and being recycled every day. Yeah. You know, today was uh, eating something, you know, and then tomorrow part of the subsoil, you know, and gone. And then again, but what is gone? Only the body is gone. That's going to be told later. And then the person comes back, sprawling, like jack in the box. You box, you open and like a spring attached, without fail, comes back. 
Well, what is there to cry? I mean, even if you look at the, if we don't need self-knowledge for this. Just look at it from the samsaric point of view. And if you have, you know, 1% Hinduism in, in you, think about the whole re recycling, rebirth, etc. So, where is the grief? You know, they are just unrecognizable, that's all. They're not gone, they're unrecognizable. You knew them in a certain way and they are no longer in that form, that's all, you know. And so many things are dying, you know, flowers are dying, fruits are dying, trees are dying, weeds, poor weeds. They are just being murdered by the dozen, yeah, especially in this season. Everyone goes after them. There are serial weed killers in this neighborhood even, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are dying. All the time this is happening. And then what? A new weed comes back, you know. And then, uh, you know, it's a new, new weed, it's, uh, it makes the person who killed it allergic to it <laughs> and tries to take that person out, you know. There's always balance in the universe. So even without uh, the, the flashlight of self-knowledge and Atma being eternal, all this, even missing that, you can still see that death and birth are part of the life's cycles. Yeah. Things come and go. In fact, the Buddhists say the only thing that is constant is change. Mm. This is what it is. So, this is what is pointed out. The one who is a Pandita, the one who has looked around and done some, you know, thinking about all these things and seen that the way of life is for things to go and here we can bring in the shat vikaraha the six fold modifications what are they jayate asti yeah jayate without asti na vardhate asti asti eva ha yeah tatra vardhate then viparinamate then ha apakshiyate and then vinashyati born Survives birth, grows, blossoms, oh, sounding very good, uh, goes downhill, sinks, and then what? Yeah, glub, 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 finally. First has the sinking feeling, and then gone. These six fold modification, everything has, everybody has. And so, if you are a person of knowledge, and here you, you can take self knowledge, but even otherwise, if you are a person with some experience of seeing all this, you cognitively at least know that grief is not due. You know? This is something very interesting. And so, and then from the standpoint of the Atma, this is from the general, you know, we have a Harika looking at everything going. You know, everything is popping off like flies. And so you see that, okay, it's all going like that uh, poem. Mm. Yeats wrote that poem. I heard the old, old men say, everything alters, and one by one they drop away by the waters. You know, whether they drop away by the waters or whether the old men were by the waters, is, uh, that's, the, that's why he's a poet. You know, <laughs> that's the fun part. So nothing is the same and one by one they drop away. He heard the old, old men say. So th that is Pandas. Those are the Pandas who are saying nothing is the same. This is the Riti. The Niyama of this, the law of this world is that everything is impermanent. From that standpoint also, even without uh, hearing my lecture, Krishna says <laughs> that I am about to deliver on self-knowledge, you, you, you should... Inna shochitu marhasi. You don't need to grieve here, you know. Uh, all right, from the standpoint of self-knowledge, from the standpoint of the vision of self-knowledge, and what is the vision of self-knowledge? The vision of self-knowledge is that, that there is no death. So save your tears. Because where is the death? Who is dying? Is, you know, who died? Nobody Body. died. Body died. You know, body stopped functioning. And Atma looked for a new body, that's all. 
Atma said, I think I better find something a little more my style. <laughs> yeah, these clothes don't fit anymore. I think I need to go for a new fashion, 2014 fashion. This, this is not a very good, whatever, yeah. And then it's a custom-made dress. That's why it takes nine months to make. <laughs> yeah. It's made of the softest fabric. And then, you know, it needs to be put in an oven. It has to... <laughs> and all these things it needs. It needs the right environment. You know? That is what it is. You've just ordered a custom-made dress. In fact, you didn't order. You know, your karma ordered. Your karma phala ordered. Yeah. Maya knows. She has already sized you up, measured you up. Even before the undertaker, she measured. <laughs> In the olden days, the undertaker used to come with an inch tape, you know. And then as soon as the person, you know, uh, left the body, they would be called and they would measure to make the, because the, you know, ready-made coffins and all were not there. Yeah, only no, ready-made coffee was not there, <laughs> ready-made coffins were not there. And what was there? Only this, this body was there, ready to be measured. So undertaker would measure it and say that, all right, you know, this is going to cost you so much. And then because, you know, no, nothing was made in advance. It was in, in fact considered bad luck to make a coffin in advance. But here, along with the first house, people are booking their own plots, different kinds of plots. First they book a lot to build a house, and then they buy a plot. Yes. Yeah. A lot, where you go after you pop off, is called plot. Yeah. The P is for pop off. Yes. So this is what it is. And so, in those days, the undertaker would come and measure the body to know the size of the custom-made coffin. You know, and here what, even before the undertaker comes, the Maya has sized up the jiva into which kind of a, you know, clothing it will go. Yes, whether it will go in wolf clothing, sheep's clothing, <laughs> or what kind of a clothing, he already made. And then that, that is already ordered, Maya orders it, and then, you know, all the, you know, all the parents or the, you know, uh, the, 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 what's that, the warehouse where the custom fit clothes are made and the jiva is sent there to grow into, into this body which is the new dress. So from the standpoint of self-knowledge, Kimasti, where is the death? Who died? No one died. Does Atma die? No. Even any basic person should know. Even if it's your first lecture, you should say no, Atma never dies because otherwise it's not called Atma. What dies then? If Atma doesn't die, what dies? Anatma. Yes. Dvavhi Padartha, only two kinds of things. What are they? Atma and non-Atma, Anatma. So Atma doesn't die. Therefore Atma cannot be in the center stage of grief. It can neither be the topic of grief nor be the nature of the griever. Correct? All right. So where is the grief centered on? Anatma. So if it is not you, this is confusing, very confusing. <laughs> so I is not the source of grief. Atma means I, correct? All right. The not I you already concluded is not a source of grief. So then why are you grieving over the not I? I place Atma. Huh? I place Atma on the so then you, you, you know, why are you grieving? So first of all, the I is not capable of grief. It's not its nature. But the I falls in grief after looking at Anatma and saying, I, I, yo. <laughs> and it cries. So, so many Anatmas are there, correct? Cloud of earth, Anatma. One bamboo stick, Anatma. One stone, Anatma. Some bone which the dog brought, anatma. So whenever all those go, you're going to cry? No. Only with, it's very interesting, only with certain anatmas, there is a mix-up. Not with all anatmas, because if the mix-up was complete, then we can say that there's a method to this madness called, you know, ignorance, self-ignorance. 
it's a selective anatma that gets mixed up and crawls into the atma crawl space and then masquerades and and parades as though it is it is belonging to the atma anatma cannot be center of grief atma can neither be the griever nor the object of grief and where is this grief and why does it exist this is the whole thing this is why the teaching begins with the topic of grief yeah and this is also why the teaching begins with the negative particle nanj pratyaya what is that ashochyan which actually is very interesting gita is full of interesting things like dhritarashtra becomes the prayer mm-hmm. yeah ashochya and somebody can object that such a wonderful teaching should start positively should start by saying you are the whole you are wonderful you are great but then it is starting with a negative particle why all this negativity it should start on a positive note in that a uh, is hidden the pedagogy of the teaching it removes the negativity the negative particle here negates that which doesn't belong to the atma na iti it's a neti particle na iti ashochya so nothing in this universe whether it's atma or anatma there are only two things you can say neither the atma is the griever anatma cannot be the griever so atma is not the griever atma is neither the object nor subject to grief anatma cannot be the object of grief why because it's not you you are never the subject of grief but yet you grieve and then you masquerade as a pandit you rationalize your grief and what do you do you say this is normal this is what adi shankara is going to tell introducing this you know this portion of the bhashya it's very powerful let us uh, look at it a little bit दृष्ट्वा तो पांडवानीक आरभ्य नोत्से गोविंद उक्वा तूष्णी बभूव प्राणी शोकमोहादीसारीजूत दोष उद्भव कारण प्रदर्शनाथन व्याख्या ग्रंथ एंड वाट हि से इन दिस् कॉन्टेक्स्ट हियर दृष्ट्वा तो पांडवानीक विच वॉज वाट से मंत्र in the first chapter what was the first mantra dhanushita abba okay <laughs> yeah dharma kshetre kurukshetre first mantra naturally and then what what after that what drishtva tu pandava anekam vyudham dhar duryodhana stadha aacharya mupasangamya raja vachanam abravit so starting with the second mantra adi shankara says up to न योत्स्ये इति गोविंदम उक्त्वा तूष्णीं बभूवः वेयर डिड दैट कम जस्ट बिफोर व्हाट जस्ट बिफोर अशोचान अन्वशोचस्तुम जस्ट बिफोर भगवान उवाच श्री भगवान उवाच सो फ्रॉम दैट फ्रॉम द सेकंड वर्स ऑफ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर स्टार्टिंग विद द सेकंड वर्स ऑफ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर अप टिल द 10th वर्स ऑफ दिस दिस चैप्टर व्हिच चैप्टर आर वी ऑन okay so up till this verse of the second chapter he says that you know iti etad iti etadantah so this demonstrates something pradarshanatvartham this is to demonstrate pradarshanam means demonstration so what is the demonstration here it is to demonstrate the full blown nature of this disease called samsara <laughs> characterized 
by the symptoms of what? Grief and delusion. So he says, praninam for all beings, and he actually there is a there is a kind of a humor here. He doesn't say purushanam or manushanam. He says praninam because they are animalistic, you know, kind of basic behavior. Prakrita buddhya, prakrita buddhaya, you know. Prakrita buddhi nam swabhavah, prakrita buddhi swabhavah. So these behaviors, like basic behaviors of basically ignorant people. And so praninam, sentient beings, all beings who are subject to shoka and subject to moha. You know, of course the human being comes first, you know, <laughs> no doubt. But he says praninam, because here the human being, what's the use of being a human being if you are still in the grip of all this madness? So he says, <laughs> praninam, shoka mohadi, shoka moha and adipadat bhaya, etc. Shoka mohadi, samsara bija bhuta dosha udbhava karanam. Pradarsanarthatvena. So he wants to show, you know, the Lord Vyasa who is writing this, through this, for the second verse to this, what is shown here is the samsara bija udbhava karanam, the cause of the, uh, the, the, what is it that causes the seed of samsara? What is the seed of samsara? Quick. Ignorance. ignorance. What is the, you know, what is the cause for the, this seed of samsara to develop some sprouts? Desire. Yes. No, shoka and moha by this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shoka and moha are the two ankura, ankurau, shoka mohau, you know, tau, shoka mohau, dvau, ankurau. Samsara bijasya. These are the the samsara bija is sprouted into twin sprouts. <laughs> you know, one side shoka, another side what? Moha. Moha means delusion. Delusion means because of this shoka, what all the wrong things that one does. That is what is called moha. So this, because of this uh, delusion, so samsara bhuta, samsara bija bhuta, that which is the uh, uh, the bija of samsara and what is the, its problem dosha because of the fallacy of this ignorance called samsara bija here then um, th because of this samsara uh, bija what happens how does it sprout vyakheyaha granthaha so this the purpose of that is to show what happens to the seed of samsara and how it sprouts into shoka and moha. This is what it is there. So then he says, Tathahi Arjunena Rajya Guru Putra Mitra Suhrit Swajana Sambandhi Bandhu Bandhaveshu Ahamesham Mama Ete Iti Evam Branti Prate Nimitta Sneha Avichedadi Nimittau Atmanaha Shoka Mohau Pradarshitau. Also was shown, Pradarshita was demonstrated through this lovely drama that we have just finished, that we have just concluded of the lives of Arjuna and his uh, brothers. Uh, also was demonstrated the disastrous consequences <laughs> of, you know, of what, of this, uh, uh, of, uh, of excessive attachment, Sneha Vicheda, you know, uh, the disastrous consequences of excessive attachment in going under the excuse of kingdom, my teacher, my kingdom, my putra, my mitra, my suhrit, my svajana, my sambandhi, my bandhu, my bandhava. You know, because he uses all these words. Adi Shankara is very clever. All these words. Kinno rajena govinda, you know. Guru Nahatva Hi Mahanubhavan. Yeah. And then he says, you know, Shala Putra Sambandhinastata Etan Nahantu Vichami Natopi Madhusudhana. Yeah. And so Suhrit was used, Swajana was used, overused, and uh, sambandh, Shala Sambandhinastata was used, Bandhu was used, Bandhava was used. So he has not missed a beat here. 
Adi Shankara has made a compendium of all the all the the words, relationship words, used in the connection with the sixth case, and he presents them in one long compound, <laughs> and then he attaches tacks on like this: Ahamesham, Mama Ete, I belong to them, and these all these this string of relationships, starting with kingdom ityadi. Kingdom and the people and all these pe kingdom usurpers of kingdom, uncles and crooks and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know all these people. Who are they? They're all mine. They belong to me. You know, you know, and aham, you know, belongs to them. Aham has been given over to these people. The string of these my 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 me 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 people, and they all belong to me. And he says that the disastrous consequences of this misidentification. What? How is misidentification? Evam branti pratyaya nimitta. This is branti pratyaya. This is branti pratiti. Meaning, because of this branti caused by agnana, you know, and this sneha vicheda. Vicheda means with limitations because of codependence. Huh? Vicheda means limitation. Yeah. Because of sneha, sneha means anything that is sticky and oily. Mm. Yes. So affection is called sneha for <laughs> that reason. <laughs> that's it. It happens to be a fact. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Very sticky, oily, hard to get rid of. You need a special soap of Atma Vijnanam <laughs> to, to be able to wash off this, uh, you know, chick chick, this <laughs> sticky, icky, you know, sneha. And then, you know, therefore what, uh, uh, you know, this sneha vichedat, uh, because of this sneha vicheda, what is happened? Atmanaha shoka moha. So this shoka and moha are the direct consequences of two things. One is sneha vicheda. Be, be uh, codependence, in other words, just just use the modern term, yeah, <laughs> you know, wrong association and sick relationships, you know, <laughs> yeah, wanting to be needed, you know, wanting to be beaten up and, <laughs> yes, and missing, if somebody is not beating, you start missing it, this is all codependence. Beating, beaten up doesn't have to be with a stick. Yeah, the tongue itself is a stick. That's why it says that you, the, the person lashed out with a tongue. You see, yeah, it can be verbal abuse. So these abusive and sick relationships, where you know each one is needing the other, and even one minute they cannot be apart. They are velcroed together. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these are the kinds of problematic relationships. And then they don't want to see each other at all, these drastic relationships. They're because of that, only because of this over sneha, this fight is taking place, naturally. First, you know, you can't live without each other, and then you can't live with each other. So he says this, uh, this through the, this dramatic, uh, you know, story of the Pandavas and the Kauravas, he says, in other words, Adi Shankara says, don't think that we were only waiting for this, why did we study that? That had the very important uh, purpose of setting the context and not only setting the context just to say oh this is a stage and here are these people and to get, you know to to make us up to date with the story not in this that term of study setting the context setting the context for our purpose of hand at hand what is our purpose the removal of samsara along with its seed you can't just cut to prune samsara it will grow back yeah Faster than you prune it, it grows back. So therefore you have to uproot samsara and with that view, how can you uproot, with that keeping that in view, you cannot uproot samsara without knowing the seed. Mm -hmm. And here the dual seeds or the sprouts of samsara are shoka and moha. How did they get here? You know, <laughs> who mailed them? How did they find this address? Who told them to come here? Well. Two things made them, you know, gave them an invitation card. Yeah, Shoka was very happy. <laughs> Saro was very happy because he's clingy. He wants to cling on to everybody. And Moha always feels lost. He wants to always be with someone, you know, and uh, feel like he's guiding them. And so he was also very happy. 
and they received the invitation card to abide in this jiva's head and how did they know without gps which jiva to go to and adi shankara gives a very wonderful explanation he says because the invitation cards were printed and sent out by this buddhi <laughs> because the buddhi had two problems the first problem was that it made a kind of a demarcation this side of the line is all me mine and my people my bandhavas my suhrits my this my that my swajanas my people you know my putra my guru my rajya and then this side is all not mine not mine not mine not mine not mine and both be- one became the not mine became a source of fear and the mind became a source of sorrow yeah that's why shoka got the invitation shoka responded immediately in the affirmative i'm coming <laughs> i'll i'll attend <laughs> i'll attend to your buddhi and once i may go once i come i don't really normally leave you know it's a permanent tenure like a tenure track position after the person gets tenure you can't kick the person out generally so shoka that's how you know was invited and what about the other one what was the other one moha oh yeah moha was invited because of <laughs> moha got the invitation because these this limited relationships the the strange what is that codependent relationships with a sense of over a fondness over attachment overly you know um, with all the dysfunction in it wherever there is dysfunction there is moha wherever there is meanness and minus there is shoka very simple so adi shankara says having received the invitation card he doesn't say that but you know, just for fun having received the invitation card both of them responded in the, uh, in the affirmative and went and occupied the buddhi who is buddhi arjuna's buddhi here you know and then what and then that's how he you know the sneha vichhedadi nimittav atmana shoka moha pradarshitav so we had a nice demonstration of how shoka and moha received the invitation and got on to their respective wagons or whatever it was shoka's wagon was always damp and full of mold and uh, moha's was kind of always getting lost and dead end and finally it arrived so the both uh, sorrow and delusion arrived and sat in the head so then what more of the same shoka moha bhyam hi <laughs> abhibhuta viveka vijnana svatah eva kshatra dharme yuddhe pravartah api tasmat yuddhad upara ram you know ha <laughs> ah, this he says that they, once they come and sit in the head who shoka, shoka moha who well, they they don't just keep mind their own business they start looking into your daily agenda and then rubbing out your daily duties and writing in whatever they want you to do so you know your calendar becomes their calendar and they control your calendar adi shankara says so the, everybody used to have a pocket calendar now it's in the tablet or phone so when you are sleeping they reprogram your calendar shoka and moha and they make you do things that you would never do and the things that you should be doing they tell you not to do and and adi shankara says see how they have reprogrammed arjuna's calendar here and this shoka moha moha bhyam you know and because coming under the spell of shoka and moha what happens first thing they did was they they brought with them two small gags you know gag yeah yeah exactly they they gag to gag them the mouths off and they immediately tied up vairagya and viveka <laughs> also in the buddhi <laughs> and having tied up vairagya and viveka they snatched the calendar from vairagya and viveka and then scratched out the things that you said you are going to do and put in whatever they they think you are going to do and scratched out the things you said you would never do and and made you do the things that they wanted you to do both ways yeah and and we see the results of this this powerful 
calendar abduction and Viveka and Vairagya abduction by Shoka Moha on poor Arjuna's brain. <laughs> What happens? So, 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 so what happens? Viveka Vijnana. So Viveka and Vijnana, they tied up. Swataha eva kshatra dharme yudhe pravritto bhi san tasmad yuddhad uparrama. He says, look at the force of what happened in Arjuna's head. That even though he knew dharma and he knew kshatra dharma, that what is my duty? And, you know, he knew full well that, and he was not, uh, he was not averse to the war. That also he says, whether it is here, yeah, yudhe pravrittaha api. Not being a pravrittaha means pravritti, approaching the yuddha. He was not averse to yuddha. He was not nivritta from the yuddha. Approaching the yuddha, we have seen this, you know, and he was not against the war. When approaching the yuddha with full, uh, you know, speed and plus knowing his own dharma, what did he do? Tasmadapi Uparama, he wanted to flee. <laughs> and he said horrible things. I will not fight. I am going to say, I am going to plant my Gandiva here. I am not going to take it up. Let them kill me. You see, this is the power of Shoka and Moha. That gag the Viveka Vairagya, you know, put stuff cotton balls in their mouth and put a bandage on their mouth and zip up their lips so that they cannot express themselves, snatch the, the nitya, nitya karma calendar, <laughs> ashrama karma calendar, you know, which ashrama, which stage of life, you know, yeah, which stage of life, what should be doing, that calendar they snatched, because you, we have several calendars. We have Varna calendar, Swadharma calendar, you know, we have Ashrama calendar, Nitya Naimitika Karma calendar, which is applicable to everyone. All these, we have three, we are a three calendar society. <laughs> and all the three calendars, Viveka and, uh, you know, uh, Buddhi, uh, the, the Vijnana, Buddhi and Viveka sit and, uh, you know, guide. But unfortunately, they were tied up. Yeah, <laughs> literally, they were tied up. And then, Shoka and Moha, abducted and hijacked those calendars and made them topsy-turvy so much so that a stalwart warrior like Arjuna Upara Rama from Upa plus Ram Rarama long time ago and you know Upara Rama means what you know Adi Shankara doesn't have a you know stuttering problem it's a it's a it's a uh, lit for Paroksha you know Paroksha Bhut and uh, so remote past. So in the long ago, even someone who was so uh, close to dharma of all kinds and who knew his duty, the Shoka and Moha sitting in the head, you know, brought along a friend called Bhranti and who messed up the calendars and then what happened? They were, they, he, they were not available to him and even a seasoned warrior like Arjuna who was not against the war want, wanted to flee from the war, wish to flee from the war, you know, and then what? As if this was not enough. <laughs> Furthermore, <laughs> you know, and then what? You know, Uparama doesn't mean flee, it means stop. He wanted to stop the war, yeah. Uparam to stop, yeah. So then, um, no, as if this was not enough, Paradharmancha bhiksha jeevanadikam kartum pravavritte. You know, as though this was not confuse, confusion enough. He not only gave up his own dharma, but he wanted to take on the dharma of someone else. Who? Who? Ah, of the sadhus. Yeah. He became a wannabe sadhu. And then he said, that life looks really cool and quiet and free of all this strife, I think I'm going to have that. <laughs> As though this was not enough. That's what I mean. They erase your calendar and put in what they want you to do. Yeah. So two problems here. If, if they just erased it, you can ask someone, okay, what am I supposed to do? But they have listed their own things and they make you tie up to that and do that. So. You know, Adi Shankara is kind of appalled here. And, <laughs> and then, you know, and then, uh, and then, so as a result, what happens is Paradharma. So other people's duties. Here, the duty of the people who don't have duties. That's the only duty of the sadhu. 
there is nothing to do correct and so he wants to have that non duty to make that non duty his duty para dharma means the pasture of the neighbor starts to look very inviting yeah because it is always greener on the other side you know my life is horrible and the other person's life is delicious and delightful this is what it is and so therefore what it starts to look really nice he says and then para dharmam cha and what was this para dharmam bhiksha bhiksha jeevanadikam so that which uh, you know featured uh, bhiksha first thing i mean because eating is the mode of eating is what uh, um, changes uh, uh, you know is different from the um, samsaris and the sanyasis and so that's what is he, uh, he uh, talks about and he, in keeping with the word that arjuna used bhiksha charyam charanta he said you know bhiksha api ha loke shreya so not only that so this bhiksha jeevanam you know adikam uh, kartum pravravritte uh, he went he started to go towards other people's dharma and start begging his food because uh, you know with with the help of bhiksha he that this is where his mind went thanks to the dumbing numbing effect of shoka and moha and then adi shankara concludes this particular section and then he says that tathacha sarva praninam shoka moha di dosha dosha vishta chetasam swabhavate eva swabhavate eva swadharma parityagah pratishiddha seva cha syat so he says not just arjuna is just one of so many people mm-hmm. arjuna is a typology here an archetype and he says this is swabhavika eva swabhavike what is swabhavika sarva praninam or for all the, the pranis shoka moha di dosha vishta chetasam those whose inner instruments antakarana chetasa the heart is afflicted by the fallacy of shoka dosha etc Sh- sorry shoka moha etc bhaya you can add and uh, swabhavatah eva by naturally alone swadharma parityagah pratishiddha seva cha swabhavikam syat you know so naturally what happens very interesting that for all human beings because of the effect of the combined effect of shoka and moha together mm-hmm. you know clamoring around in the brain uh, you know after being invited then avish avishta chetasa means for those whose hearts have hijacked been hijacked by shoka and moha for them this these two things are very very normal what is very very normal what they are told to do or asked to do they will not do mm-hmm. they don't want to do where they are placed to do what they should be doing they do not want to do they have apathy mm-hmm. yes first apathy and then what they have sympathy towards the other person's jobs mm-hmm. empathy so first of all they don't do what is to be done by them then they have a penchant and empathy for what is not to be done by them what is to be done by others that starts to look very interesting and these two are the precursors to psychopathy called <laughs> <laughs> the psychopathy of self ignorance so first is apathy and then is empathy for somebody else's job and then what you know degenerative mental capacities thinking psychopathy of ignorance so he adi shankara says that this is swabhavikam eva so this we don't see this in arjuna alone we see this in everyone that other people's jobs start to look nice each time anyone gets into a difficulty for the one who is afflicted and whose mind has been powerfully taken away from being present by shoka and moha those who are hijacked by shoka and moha this is not a big deal and to illustrate this itself arjuna is there for us tatha cha sarva praninam shoka moha di do oh uh, yeah that i have seen we have seen next one swadharme pravritta nam api tesham vang manah kaya dinam pravritti hi phala bhi sandhi purvaka eva sahankara cha 
bhavati a small group of people still manage to do their swadharma you know they may not run away from the war if they are a kshatra and if they are a, you know a, any other nitya karma is given to them even though they have come under difficulty uh, and uh, been hijacked by apathy etc they will not leave or want to leave like arjuna did they will kind of they are the plodders adi shankara concedes that everybody will not get up and go they are the plodders they are the grumblers mumblers fumblers grumbling mumbling grumbling grumbling they, they'll get up grumbling grumbling they'll make their coffee grumbling grumbling they'll go to work and on the way to work they'll grumble grumble and then at work they'll mumble mumble and then coming home they'll fumble fumble they keep kind of they 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 feel very stoic and then they keep plodding along and adi shankara says do they deserve praise he says absolutely not yeah <laughs> they may not go to the other side and say the pastures are greener and i'm going to abandon you know what i don't like i'm going to abandon and go somewhere else because that seems more alluring they may not do that but still they don't deserve praise why because they uh, they amplify or exemplify the flip side of this coin of the levers so the levers and the 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 the, the, the runners away the detractors from the battle the the people who are the derelicts are on one side the dereliction from duty dereliction from swadharma though the derelicts are on one side and these people are no hermits they are what they are also under the spate of that same ignorance which the derelicts have they just stay and grumble that doesn't mean that they are praiseworthy you know and then he says in fact they are you know you will see that after doing their duty or in the process of doing their duty their duty or their jobs or whatever they are about in their life however they contribute in their life is um uh, is um, comes under the spade um what is the word for, uh, how do i put this is it a, uh, it comes under the spade of an important fallacy which is always looking to the fruit of the action mm-hmm. even before the action itself mm-hmm. so they put the cart before the horse mm-hmm. that's what i wanted to say they put the cart cart before the horse mm-hmm. and keep anticipating the fruit and that's why they stay in this so called duty but they're not enjoying it and then the, he says that um sarva dharme pravrittanam swadharme pravrittanam api out of those who are still engaged in their own duty tesham vagman kayadinam pravrittihi so their body mind sense complex speech etc all of it is dedicated for phala bhisandhi phala phala bhisandhi means what's going what am i going to get out of it what am i going to this expectancy akanksha the expectancy of phala mars this duty and then what is the second thing is sahankara the ego is doing everything yeah so the ego is wanting the fruit of the work which is accolades and approval and money and honey and all these things and uh, yeah that's why ego is called honey madhu mm-hmm. yeah madhu sudana that's why so therefore it's wanting all these you know sweet talk and sweet behavior from others and approval from others and for to that end what is it doing the person it's leading the person's uh, work capacity and even though the person may not have gone off to greener pastures to test out their luck that even though they are still engaged in their job it's half hearted because kaya vacha manasa you know physical mental and verbal all their energies are devoted to how to produce the fruits conducive to my raga and dveshas not how to do my duty perfectly so he says there are two problems you know one is that the the phala bhisandhi means the expectancy of the results is one problem one damper it casts and what is the other one the other problem is the ahankara the ahankara is also a big problem you know and he says this casts a big gloom over samsara and its broods and uh, with, so this has to be avoided he's going to say but what a nice bhashya no mm. yeah fantastic this part is very nice 
ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುಗಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಮೇ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದ ಡೂವರ್ ಏಜೆಂಟ್ ಏಜೆಂಟ್ ದ ಡೂವರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚಸ್ ಟು ದ ಡೂವರ್ಶಿಪ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ದ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಜಾಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ದ ಡೂವರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಟೂ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಕರ್ತಾ ಭಕ್ತ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಯಾ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕರ್ತ ಕರ್ತೃತ್ವ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಡೆಕಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಸಮಹೌಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ನಾರ್ಮಲಿ 